go in that direction with him? Well, you know, we went through uh, our, our interview processes are pretty extensive, pretty thorough. A lot of great candidates. I mean, really from all levels, you know, college and pro level. Uh, great in-house stuff, you know, Coach Mastro, who has done such a great job in elevating our offense and helping us continue to be more productive and progressing. Um, guys like that really, um, you know, stood out in the process. And at the end of the day, we wanted to put together the, the best five coaches, uh, Coach Moorhead, uh, you name it. I mean, he's done it with different personnel groups. He's done it as a head coach and a play caller. He's done it as a play caller. He's done it against some of the best defenses in the country. And he's found a way to get the ball to, to different different guys in the offense. So very versatile, very multiple, tremendous teacher, conceptual teacher, a very thorough guy, great family guy. I mean, he got a chance to meet his family as we were traveling all over the place and ended up down in, uh, in Birmingham. They came out and, and said hello for a second. But, you know, we always talk about people that are made of the right stuff. He's made of the right stuff. He has the right DNA. He is a perfect fit for Oregon. Um, and he's ready to bring it. You know, he really is. He's got a lot of juice, has got a lot of energy, has a chance, had a chance to meet the players, and he brought it right away in the team meeting. So, um, but again, we're, we're thrilled to have him here, and he is excited to get to work ASAP. Mario, when your search started, Joe was not someone who was available. He became available shortly after the Rose Bowl. How quickly when someone of that prominence becomes a bill, how quick did you make that call and how important you touched on some of the interview process, but there are jobs that are taken sometimes sight unseen himself at Mississippi state, even how important was that to the interview process from your perspective? In terms of which part, how we came upon, how quickly, well, nowadays on Twitter, man, you get a, right. A, an alert every three seconds when anything happens around the country. So uh, when that alert came out and as we were going through the interview process, it was, paramount to get a hold of him right away to see if there was any interest while at the same time being respectful of the moment very difficult time for anybody when that happens but having watched film on him having watched his teams his offenses produce um, we had to we had to make a run at it knowing that you know what it's uh it was going to be well worth it and when he had a chance to come here and visit and sit with us as a staff had a chance to sit with him one-on-one -on -one as well um, just everything just just ooze of what we are about I and mean, this is a a guy that's not only a great football coach but a great man a great mentor for um our student athletes and so um and there were some other great candidates and extremely respectful of them in the process as well but but joe was definitely the one Mario, last time for National Signing Day, Robbie Ashford signed right after, so you weren't able to talk about him at the time. So um, ask a little bit about him and obviously baseball player to what has that conversation been like and mm -hmm. having multiple quarterbacks in this class, is, is that something that you know you value and how do you look at that situation? Yeah, without a doubt. The guys that touch the ball on every single player are the center and the quarterback. And Robbie, multi-sport, very talented athlete, uh, another tremendous human being, hard worker, great competitor. So he ends up signing right after the press conference. And then Dante Manning, one of the top corners in the country, ends up signing um, right after um, they played in that little bowl game out there, the uh, All-Star game. So uh, two tremendous additions, two high caliber, uh, high character student athletes uh, that we feel can make an impact right away. Robbie certainly brings a lot to the table, uh, not only as a football player, but as you mentioned, a baseball player. And he will be granted that opportunity here. That's something that he wants to pursue. He's playing baseball right now. We went and saw him the other day. And I tell you, they, they, they go at it pretty hard down there in Birmingham when they play baseball. He was, he was pretty good, but looks great. 220, 225 pounds, strong arm guy. Did a great job at the Polynesian Bowl in Hawaii, um, as well as Dante Manning, which is kind of nice. We had eight guys out there playing that all-star game, and they all got to know each other, spent a lot of time around each other. And that's critical because now they know who's a sloppy roommate. They know who is a timely guy. They know how to pair up and they can pick their roommates a little bit more easily. So uh, all in all, just, uh, you know, with the addition of those two guys, not to mention all the other stuff that has transpired over the past um, month or so, it's been an incredible, incredible January and, and certainly a great start to February. In the middle, Tyson. You guys always talk about getting better at, at what you guys do, and I'm just curious, uh, doing a second coordinator search a year after last, last season's, did you guys change anything in the way that you go about that process? And just coming off the season you did, do you feel like that opened up a few more doors than maybe you guys had last season? 
Well, certainly the process remains the same. It's a process that I was put through back in 2005 when I had a, an opportunity to interview with the New York Jets um, and uh, with Coach Mangini. And, and I thought I was going for, you know, a walk in the park, hour and a half kind of chill session, exchange a little bit of information. And, um, you know, the processes which he used, which I believe was part of Bill Belichick's process when interviewing candidates, was a very extensive, um, very thorough a borderline grueling process that really tested your knowledge. It tested your ability to teach in front of others on the board from a demonstration standpoint, assess film, um, assess another team's film, and at the same time teach off of the film that your guys, you know, showed early in the year and correct and um, assess and everything that goes with it. So we've used that process here as we hire any position. So. And as you know, we've had a couple more guys, a couple of graduate assistants are on board now, analysts, um, a recruiting personnel person also. It's what we use. Um, I forget the second part of the question. Well, it's just coming off of having like, a very good season that you guys had this year. Did that open up some more doors for you guys? Well, I, Oregon's Oregon. I think Oregon is in itself just the brand is has always been extremely strong. I mean, we, we put it upon ourselves to understand, learn more all the time so we can uphold the legacy and do everything we can to continue to elevate every standard within the program for those that came before us. So I think that in itself speaks for itself. I think when you play on national TV in a New Year's Six game and and you've got whatever it was, 16 plus million watching, I, that, yeah, there's an attraction to that. When you see back-to-back -back years, we have the top recruiting class in the conference and both times top 10 classes, that's, that's going to attract, you know, it's going to attract high caliber people, high caliber coaches. So, yeah, we feel that certainly that that plays a little bit of a role in it. Second row on the left, Eric. You mentioned the additions of Ashford and Manning, but no other players. I think new on at least the sheet I was given. Do you expect that to change? And and then early impressions on the eight guys that enrolled uh, last mm -hmm. month. Well, you know we're we're always hopeful, right? The day is long, and uh, in fact, sign day. You've got a you've got a little bit of wiggle room now, and. And certainly you also have, um, you know, the advent of the transfer portal certainly changes things. So a lot of things could happen. You have to assess your roster in the spring. God forbid any injuries that you may have along the way or or maybe even a defection or two. You never know. But um, you always want to continue. Your assessment process is continual. It just never stops. And we will continue to address any needs that we have. Now we are, again, hopeful that as the day goes on that we may have another addition. But again, nothing is guaranteed. Um, in the meantime, the early enrollees have been outstanding. Uh, first, a compliment to our players for embracing these guys the way they have. Because what's, what's done here at Oregon is we introduce competition the right kind of way. Competition cannot be a threatening type of situation. It has to be something that's embraced because it makes everybody better. Um, and they've been extremely impressive. TJ Bass is a large, powerful human being. He really is, and it shows and everything he does from his broad jump to his power clean, he moves extremely well. Uh, Jay Butterfield is a talented guy. We can't watch the guys throw, so I, I can't comment on any of that stuff. Jonathan Dennis, who came from all the way across, you know, the country, what a what an impressive guy. Just powerful, you know, hard working guy. You can't give him enough. Just always asking for more. JJ Greenfield has been outstanding. Noah Sewell Noah has had the best early enrollment process of all time. Come here for a week, go to Hawaii for a week, come on back for a week. I mean, this guy's like on the, he's on the super plan, but um, it's great to see him around his brother and the way uh, he's quickly adjusted. He knows so many players on our team that it's been a very smooth adjustment for him. Jake Shipley has been great. Braden Swinson has been phenomenal. Bennett Williams, those are the eight guys that are here right now. And we expect about four more to join us in the month of April, being that we're a quarter system and we could get a couple more guys to start that spring semester. We got about three minutes left in the middle here, Jerry. Yeah, Coach. Eighteen in eighteen, the defense is good, but it even got better in nineteen. I think you would agree. Do you expect the same from the offense, and specifically, what changes can you talk about? And we saw the difference in Utah in the Rose Bowl with Jason Her I mean, Justin Herbert running the ball. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe we could expect a little more of that. Well, I think first and foremost, uh, credit to Coach Avalos, credit to the players, because they're the ones that bonded the defense. You know, in, in 2018, we were the bottom half of just about every category defensively. And after one year of, of coaches' system and the bond of the players, we're at top the top uh, unit or top two at worst three in just about every single defensive category within the conference. 
and top 20 in several categories. That is a, a monstrous jump from the previous year. And uh, again, credit to everyone involved in that because that is a drastic change in performance. We'd like the same thing on offense. You know, there's certainly some things that were positive and there's some other things that you want to get better at. And regardless of how good or bad you've done the previous year, you always want to improve. Uh, we certainly see um, opportunities to improve in stretching the field in some of the things we do in terms of our tempo. Uh, we always want to run the ball better. I mean, it's, you could all, the laundry list is going to be long, but at the same time, acknowledge some of the good things that we've done and do everything we can to enhance those things. I think anytime you have a change, there's always a little bit of carryover. We're still in the uh, process of assessing what does carry over and what doesn't, what terminology is useful and what has to go in a different direction. Um, and that'll take about seven, 10 days before we, we make that final playbook adjustment and roll with it. Time for one more, James. In terms of personnel, Mario, in the early signing period, you mentioned the possibility of trying to look to add a tight end. You have not done that to date. Is that something you look to address via the portal? And additionally, in specialists, uh, nobody's been announced, but I know you have a preferred walk-on at kicker. I believe there's been some kind of pursuit at punter as well. With Tom back, how do you look at those positions going forward on special teams? Well, I'll tell you, the last six games, the last six weeks, I would say Tom is um, Tom Snee has done really, really well. Like all that potential we saw in him, it started coming out in practice. Um, and, and we're counting on him to be a really good uh, punter for us. You know, we also have some guys that we expect to walk on. We can't comment on those by name. Uh, we'll see how, how that goes as well. Um, you know, we are going to, and this is actually a good point that you bring this up, DJ Johnson will move to tight end for the spring, okay? He has expressed interest in doing so. Uh, he runs really well. Uh, we want to get him on the field more. He's a team guy. He wants to be here. He wants to help the team win. Um, and he is. He looks great. He looks great running around. He looks great physically. He's a sharp guy. He's a bright guy. He's a team guy. So we're going to do whatever we can to get him on the field.